hit subscribe to the DIY writer to support your hardworking authors and also lessen your chances of ending up as a victim in their next book. Join me at the first annual Icarus Book Convention, May 8th and 9th. This conference has a great lineup of speakers, including little old me, talking about podcasts, vlogs, and other neat author stuff. Go to Icarus, I-Q-A-R-U-S, book, con, C-O-N, dot com for more information. Hope to see you there. This is Jeff Bacon with the DIY Writer Podcast, and today we have the uh, creator of The Wand Chronicles, and if you happen to look at his author profile, you'll see that he's written an awful lot of other books, um, some fiction, nonfiction, and everything else. He's also going to venture into science fiction. Let me introduce the fabulous Michael Ross. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you very much, Jeff. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. So, so what's happening today? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing very well. Uh, you know, as, a, uh, as an author... We've always been on lockdown anyway, you know, let's face it. So uh, I have my structured day. I've been out for my power walk and I've come back. I've had a nice strong coffee. I do some writing till I get fed up. And then, uh, and now I'm finishing the day off chatting to you. So there you go. Uh, I've canceled my round the world trip, which, <laughs> which is impossible at the moment uh, with my, because I'm on permanent staycation. Okay. No. I'm on staycation, not vacation, it's staycation. So okay. I'm here. Yeah. In my uh, in my pretend library here, which looks beautiful. It does. It, it looks lovely. I, I can't Im <laughs> I can't imagine a better place to be sitting there, especially with the uh, baby grand panel piano in the background. Oh yes, it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Just sit down and just uh, just whip out a song to you. Well, you know, in all honesty, I went, uh, you, I went to a boarding school, and a boarding school is a very strict one. Um, we had uh, what we called prep, which was like homework before tea. We had homework after tea. We weren't allowed to watch television. Luckily, we all the it was a boys only school. There was a sanity involved in that there were also three girls schools in the town as well. So that kept our sanity going a little bit, but. Uh, to stop getting bored, if you'd done your homework uh, and you were having piano lessons, you went and played. So I was doing two to three hours a day. So, oh, wow. uh, you know, uh, I, I, probably, I wouldn't have done that if I was at home in a normal environment, but I did. I did then. So, yeah, I can um, I, I, I like the piano. It's a great therapy tool for me. Hmm. So let's start off with talking about the Wand Chronicles. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about the books? Sure. Um, well, before I talk about those, okay. <laughs> I know there's a structure to this. Bef I know there's a structure to this, but I just want to lead into how it, how I wanted something like this. Um, okay. I've always been interested in sci-fi uh, and and fantasy things. Uh, the very first book I wrote was a, a comedy about shoppers. You go to a shop maybe you have them in walmart if you could just sit like a fly on the wall and watch people there are some strange things people do when they go shopping so i put that into a book and that was a comedy then i wrote a true life story um and it was fine it was 175 pages but it was it was over before i finished it and but i wanted something classic i'd just seen lord of the rings and i wanted something that i could call an epic fantasy Mm -hmm. So I started writing um, and um, I have four books in the series of The One Chronicles. Uh, bearing in mind, I'm not a structured author. I'm a pantser with mm -hmm. somebody who writes by the seat of his pants. Um, and I have a, a very large map on my wall, I can see here, of the Elvish Kingdom. It's called Lanyakir. And there's little um, images all over it. And each one of those images will be a chapter in the book. But I have no idea what that chapter will be or what's going to happen into it or what this world building will be like or the characters in it till I actually sit down and start writing. And then it all comes out. Hmm. Now, the big problem about that, of course, is that you wonder if you are a rubbish writer. And uh, <laughs> it's only when you start sending it off to be reviewed and um, you get 
professional editors who come along and they start going through the books and then you start getting awards for them maybe that you know it for me it works <laughs> uh, and for a long time I didn't I thought I was only author in the whole wide world who wrote like that <laughs> but there are there are others there are others there are and um and I didn't know this but I so I was worried at first but so so I decided to write this epic fantasy and let things develop in my mind uh bearing in mind I'm an actor. I've been an actor for 35, 40 years. Uh, I'm a method actor, okay. um, as in Meryl Streep, Dustin Hoffman, and so on. So I was learned the craft on how to build up a character, but more importantly, make that character believable. That was always my end point when I was acting. If I was portraying a character, could I make this character so believable? Now, it's okay with human characters, but what happens when you get an Elvish character? Can you make that Elvish character be believable? And I think to a certain extent, I've done that in the book. Okay. So um, that's where I went. Uh, that's how I started building it up. And I wanted them to meet. I wanted the humans and the elves to meet. As it happens, and I'm telling you this now, this is new, this is a scoop, this, that okay. it all happened this portal less than a mile from where I live. Who really? would have thought? And there, <laughs> and, there, uh, and so there is this magnificent portal. Uh, purely by chance, the humans met the elves through this portal. Um, I'm also very aware of climate change and things maybe we could do better for our planet. You know, I mean, I, I think it's important. So I've introduced the elves uh, because they've been around for about three million years longer than we have. I mean, let's face it. So they're a lot more evolved and they could see where we're heading and they, they needed to help us. So it was partly arranged by higher, higher brains above them that they said the humans and the elves must meet. So you have the humans and you have the elves, then they come together then there is this period where they're trying to get used to each other. Um, you know, the bumbling humans, I call them in the beginning, and we are, we're bumbling compared to the elves. Um, just a matter of minutes, have you heard of ley lines? Do you, yes. If I said to you, do you know what? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, at one time, certainly in Britain, certainly in France, ley lines were very important. If you look, for example, in France, all the old churches were built in straight lines and they follow these spiritual ley lines mm -hmm. really big powerful things and you know the elvish kingdom is huge is a massive area so for them to get the elves to get from one side to the other they have managed to use the power and harness the power of these ley lines which is great for them but for the humans who very easily get seasick and nauseous traveling on them they had a hell of a job try to get from one side of uh, Laniakir to the other. So I started introducing little things that maybe we've got, which we could enhance and bring into the story. Hmm. <clears throat> and what was that? Um, ultimately, there is an amazing, a powerful wand. Now look, with all due respect to Harry Potter, and I was one of the guys that bought one of the first books and all the rest of it, this isn't a piece of stick as a wand. Uh, Elvina, she's called. When you want to use Elvina, and not everybody can do, she actually infuses into the body. Hmm. So ultimately, whoever's using the wand, Elvina, becomes the wand. And we have this amazing character who reincarnates all the time a sorceress an elvis sorceress called elfistra who's the object of that very first proper book of the series um her mistrust of humans is unbelievable uh and she makes them <laughs> pretty nervous most of the time but um i like the idea then we if you have something wherever you are even now where in our countries if there's something there, it's pretty valuable. And, you know, 
everybody wants it. They will do anything they can to get their hands on it. So we have this adventure where we are trying to prevent um, other forces, other species from other being uh, beings from different parts of the cosmos coming along and trying to grab this uh, LV of the wand. So, but interspersed with all that, you know, the the world building that I'm bringing in, I've got all sorts of other nefarious characters, I suppose you call. Some are very magical and some aren't. Uh, so it's it's quite um, quite a roller coaster ride, but I also wanted so rom romance. Hey, come on! I mean, mm -hmm. you know, let's have a bit of love in it all. So there's a beautiful Elvish scientist called Alana, and we have a, a, a British general called Hugo Bruff, and they fall in love. Come on, they fall in love. So. None of my books have profanity in it or out and out sex. I just think I could have done it. And anyway, you know, the elves have moved on from that. So there's more of a spiritual ceremony that they got involved in. And they actually have the very first hybrid child. Uh, and she's called Kia and she's an empath. Subject then of the second book. Now, I don't know if you've got children, Jeff, or for those people out there that have got, say, teenage daughters. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they have their hormones and they go through. Imagine you've got half human girl going through this terrible 14 year old stage. Her hormones are kicking in, but she's also got the magical powers of an elf. So she can leave her father floundering in the air like a fish out of water, 10 feet off the ground because she's angry. So um, I try again, it's all this big idea of trying to make it believable. Mm -hmm. Let's make this whole world believable. So that's the subject of uh, that book, basically, is the adventures that we have with Kia, this incredible empath. But she works with a group of another nine empaths as well who are small children believe it or not so they come into the story as well and then eventually we come to eternity which is the final one we have a beautiful elvish queen called uh, harantha um and um at the very very end it seems there is a very powerful force that wants to steal elvina there's a most amazing battle We've seen the battles in Lord of the Rings. Phew, you know, that's just a little play round in the park. This is a big battle. We have everything in it from dragons uh, to, um, to elves to even orc star or a form of orc comes into it. It's an almighty, almighty battle. Uh, but I won't tell you who wins in the end. But uh, uh, anyway, it's all good. It's all good. So... <clears throat> You know that that sounds extremely cool. I especially <laughs> like the uh, the teenage uh, you know uh, hybrid <laughs> thing. Yes, I have kids. I have a bunch of kids, so I I shouldn't say a bunch. I've got four. So I've got a thirty year old, a twenty year old, a, um, a three year old, and a ten month old. Okay. Oh, all that's great. Space all by the that's same a life. You should be an actor because it's all down to timing. You know this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at timing. Yeah. <laughs> One of my fortes. So, I, you know, <laughs> awesome. But uh, before we uh, start recording, you're telling me about how you uh, got into being an author. You've been an actor. You've been uh, yeah. in fitness. You've, uh, you've been a ski coach. I mean, you've done an awful lot with your life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, hey, I'm going to be an author. How'd you get into being an author? Well, well, ah, well, that's, oh, thank you for asking that. No, well, I'll tell you what it is. I decided to do a uh, develop a fitness brand. I started from the very beginning and I thought, how can I improve things? How can I come up with something that is unique? And, it, you know, at first thought, you think this is impossible. So I came up with something called Ket Fusion. We use little kettlebells and we use martial art exercises. I'm a martial artist. So... And I always thought you hear lots of fitness classes and you know, the music It's like, <laughs> no, I wanted good music. I wanted Motown. I wanted Beach Boys. I wanted 
queen. I wanted, so we can do exercise to this. And the secret of it all, and I didn't know this at first, but the secret to it is having the right songs with the right beat because then everybody has their personal trainer if you follow the beat. So you can work as hard as you like or not as hard as you like, you see. So, mm -hmm. so I made this thing. Well, I started getting sore hips. I was presenting 19 classes a week and I started getting sore hips. To cut a long story short, I need both my hips redoing. I've got two brand new hips okay. and they are amazing. They are amazing. So um, I thought, well, what can I do? You know, I can't do the fitness thing anymore. I'll run it as a business, but I'll have to do something else. So it was at that time I went to see a clairvoyant. Okay. You know, you, you either believe them or you don't. And I just thought, let's go and see. And for the first half hour, she was saying, as they do, you are this horse in the field. Your hoof is stuck in the in the mud but it is coming free and you will fly like an eagle and all this stuff i said yeah right okay and then suddenly she says oh my god you've got to write you have to write I said write what write a letter to the inland revenue what, what, what i don't know she says no no you've got to write all oh, right okay she says no I'm, and she got up grabbed me by the shoulders write you've got to write i said okay right we'll write now i didn't know what she meant what sort of writing uh -huh. so for the first week late at night i lit my candle and i had my pen on a piece of paper and i thought i'll just let the spirits take it where it wants and it was great i just ended up with a load of mess on the paper and it was nothing there i thought oh no this is a load of rubbish so i gave it up well very shortly afterwards I would go shopping and I'd go for a drink of coffee in this superstore and I would look over at all the shoppers and I'd notice they'd do weird things there's all sorts <laughs> of strange things going on and I've got a I'd like to think a sense of humor so I would write up a little piece and post it on Facebook well this went on twice once or twice a week and then people started saying, oh, that's great. When's the next one coming out? Or why don't you write a book? How can I write a book? I mean, you've, you've got to get somebody to publish. You've got to find a publisher. Then somebody said, no, Amazon KDP. It won't cost you a dime. You can get your book, format it, design the cover, press the publish button, and you'll get a book. So I did it. Uh, and that moment, it was greater than possibly winning the lottery. You know what it's like when you get your first book there and it's in front of you and you go, mmm, book. Yeah. A bit like Simpson with his donuts, you know, he's like, mmm, book. So mm. I thought, mmm. So, <laughs> so I realised then that I really enjoyed it. Like I say, I went through this little period where I thought, I'm somebody who just, I don't like to, to, to sort of, get everything in a little column and, and work out the characters before I come to it. I don't want to do that. I just want to write as I feel I want to write as I sit down. I could tell you the story. I always thought it was important to me that I could tell you the beginning, the middle and the end in 10 minutes. If I can do that with a story. I know I'm okay. That's all I need. <laughs> so um, I, it was then um, I wrote a, a true life story. Uh, which was important for me. It was a cathartic thing. Uh, just, uh, it might sound morbid this, but it's not. And a lot of good has come from that particular book. It was a book called Just Five More Minutes. Uh, 13 years ago, my wife was attacked and murdered and my two boys were four and six. Mm. Uh, and I wrote this book. And um, the first half was all about what happened and how you experience it all. But the second half, is a very positive side of things. And I wanted to, I said to myself, if I can help one person, I'm, I'll be overjoyed. It has since all gone around the world and it keeps picking up awards and things. And you know, uh, honestly, Jeff, it is full of grammatical mistakes because I didn't have an editor then of uh, formatting problems. It just shows you if the message in the book is right, then it will carry forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um so once i finished that that's then i thought seriously yeah i want to be an author 
I want to be an author. I want to write an epic fantasy classic and I want it to be made into a film. So that was been my goal. Hmm. But in between, I've written some award-winning children's books. <laughs> I've written some scary story books, yeah. which I've quite enjoyed. Um, and I don't think I will touch pure romantic books or there will be some genres I'm not too interested in personally. But I do want to write a purely science fiction book, which I know what's in my mind <laughs> for once, but uh, that will be used for my science fiction book. So, uh, but the One Chronicles, I'm very proud of it. If you can be, mm -hmm. if there is such a thing as being proud of a series, it's this book that I'm, these books that I'm proud of. There is a, there is such a thing as being proud of a series, yes. Yeah. There absolutely so. is. It's, it's almost like another child. Yeah. You know, yeah. watch it um, grow or you watch it fail, whatever it is, but it is, it's absolutely just a part of you. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Your virtual background goes right, uh, went right into your cup. It looked like you're drinking books. Oh, well, it, it, you see, this is the, um, I've picked up obviously a lot of Elvish magic here. <laughs> you you see, are... I don't, you know, you know what? I don't stop at things like this. I like, I, I, I love magical things. Okay. Uh, and if you can, if you can, we all forget what it was like to be children. And that is such a shame with all of us as adults. If you can bring some of that back into your life. I mean, I've got a sign on my back door, a big sign. And it says, Michael is away with the fairies, but don't worry, they'll keep bringing him back. And, um, <laughs> and that's my life. And I've, I've written I've three books into a series called The Big Fairy Adventures. Well, you have to be careful I, with that because somebody might take that the wrong way. <laughs> yeah thanks for that yeah i hadn't thought about that oh we'll do that oh my uh, but gosh outside, <laughs> but outside at the very front of my cottage uh, it's a, a lot of people walk up with children it's a beautiful part of the world and i've built amazing and amazing fairy gardens really it's got water features oh god yeah and i just wanted to do it to help the children during lockdown i thought it was important that if I can get some children, when they look back on 2020 and say, hey, that was a good year. We had a nice summer and we got so involved with the fairy garden. We painted rainbow rocks and there were, and it is, it's extensive. And people started coming from outside the area. But it was all for me to look over from my uh, man cave or author's den, look at the um, fairy garden and get my inspiration as I was re uh, writing the books, but it's helped a lot of children too, which is great. Well, you know, the one thing is, and I, I truly believe this, I, and I think you do too, I'm just gonna reiterate it a little bit, is, is as an adult, it's very important to play like a child. It yeah. is very important. That's how you, I mean, that, that's how you don't get so damn serious and, and stuck on yourself. You know, remember, re mm. remember how to play like a child. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, is that, you know, believing in or imagining or whatever you want to say, you know, fairies and elves and dragons and, and, you know, a, a, a magical world and believing in magic in the world, there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think it's very healthy, you know, yeah. and, and making sure that kids don't get so stuck in, yeah. you know, some, sometimes I, I think that uh, we adultify kids too much and worry about math and, you know, this and that, and, you know, reading the, you know, you know, certain stories and everything else is like, you know, they need a healthy dose of dose of imagination. Cause that's how the world progresses yeah. is imagination. Yeah. yeah. I mean, whether it be in sci-fi well, or fantasy or whatever, I mean, that's, that's very important. I think it's more important for adults yeah. to be honest with yeah. you. Otherwise you forget who you are. Oh, I agree. I agree. I mean, this idea of, I suddenly sat down about it was sometime before Christmas and I thought if we don't nurture children's love of reading a book, where are the readers going to be when they grow up? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know there's a place for ebooks, absolutely. And they are really right in the right places. But the feel of a book, to get a book, to turn it, to look at the illustrations, to read that story, to me, is really important. So um, I'm, I'm actually writing a book at the moment. It's one for middle graders. 
It's called the. I've written it. Just written it. It's called the Moon and the Magic Box, but I've got aliens in it, and I've invited children from around the world. Well, in fact, it's just Europe, but to draw an alien, name it, tell me what its superpowers are, and I'm putting it in my book. So at the start of every chapter, we've got this amazing alien. Now, the imagination of children is unbelievable. The name they've come up with, their special powers. But why is it my luck that there's a little boy called Bobby who lives just down the road from me and he sent me his alien, which he says kills people by farting and, <laughs> <laughs> and it eats small kittens and young children. Why does it have to be a little British boy who lives three doors down from me? <laughs> so I phoned his mum up just as a joke and I said, you know, Bobby, is he is he adopted? He says no. Oh, I was just checking. I just it's so strange. So um <laughs> but it's gonna be a great book. I've got children in Dubai, children in Croatia, and they've all all children everywhere have got this imagination. And I think it's great. So I, I'm trying to nurture that, nurture our um uh, children's love of books. Yeah. <clears throat> I honestly story. think I watch I watch some of these parents that are so worried about scientific explanations. It's like go for the magic. Absolutely yeah. go for the magic. You know, they, they have yeah. enough they have enough real crap they're gonna have to deal with when they turn 18 or 21 or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Go with the magic, yeah. you know, yeah. show show them what an imagination can do because then yeah. science gets better with yeah. the imagination oh, absolutely. it really does well wasn't it uh, einstein that said <laughs> that uh, the person with the most imaginative mind is the most brilliant mind you can find yes so maybe yeah, yeah i think there's a lot in that yeah so yeah i um i try to nurture my uh six-year-old boy's mind um i get told off sometimes but i do it's within the bounds of decency <laughs> well that's very important too within the bounds of decency though the you were telling me and and again this is before we actually started recording about your childhood and i thought that was very yeah. interesting you uh you grew up in uh in nigeria and west A west africa and yeah. uh do you mind talking about that a little bit yeah sure i mean i went over when i was only a year old my father worked on the railways. He was in charge of northern Nigeria. The railway system was a large part of the infrastructure of Nigeria. Uh, my mum also worked. She was a nurse and teacher, so she was working too. Uh, I had a nanny who looked after me. So by the age of you know, five, I was able to speak Hausa, which is the dialect of northern Nigeria, um, and Pidgin English. In fact, I have a brother who lives not too far away. If we speak now, if you phone now, we'd speak Pigeon English, which <laughs> sounds, must sound and look absolutely weird, but we do. Um, but it was a great, a great time for me because, I mean, I came across little children who had never seen white man before, and we played. We couldn't speak the language in the very early days, but we played together just as any children play, and they had nothing. They... All they had was an old rusty wheel. They got up when the sun came up, they went to sleep when it went down. What they were able to sow, they could reap, but um, they all had big smiles. They had no pressures that the Western sort of children seem to have. Uh, and that has always stayed with me. That has always stayed with me. But it was a great time, a great, uh, a great love for Africa. And it was uh, uh, an important part of my childhood. Then I started going to boarding school and then going over on holiday. But you see here again, life has changed. I remember as a 10 year old being put in a taxi in England to get to the airport, to fly to London, to get on the right plane to take me to Africa on my own. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 11. I sure. wouldn't even do it now with my eldest son is 33. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. Um, a great uh, so i think all these experiences you have in life are helping me as with the acting as well to come up 
with the word world building and character building and storylines. If somebody was to say to me, what would be your ideal job? What would you like to do? Forget the money and everything else that give you. I would be a storyteller around that campfire with children and adults. It's a warm summer's night. They've got the old marshmallows toasting and I'd shout out. I wouldn't do anything planned. Give me a subject. Somebody would say something and then I'd start on the story. Uh, and when you've been an actor, uh, uh, there are those odd times when I started off, I did 17 years in theatre, where there are moments when you have the whole of the audience in your hand. Mm -hmm. It's a magical moment. And I'm sure that's the same for all performers, but it's a magical moment. And I just know I feel I could do that if I was storytelling. And I did it with my boys when I've got three boys. Uh, I've got a girl as well, but she's just a tattoo on my left hip. Uh, but I've told them these stories and I would say, what do you want to hear about tonight? And they just come up with a character and I would tell them the story. I'd, and uh, I just love doing that. So that helps too for these, for the book writing. You should do that on a Zoom call. Yeah, well, I, I've got all the plans for doing it, actually. I've, in fact, I'm... Um, I'm in an audio booth now because um, I've started getting into recording audio books and I've had some awards for the, doing that. I've got the sort of particular type of voice that they want for certain types of narration. So, sure. and I'm narrating all my own books. I mean, I've got about a stack of nine that I want to record, including the One Chronicles, because I have accents. I can do some accents, but what accent do you give an Elvish girl then? Jeff, what would you say? Well, I, it? I would think, you know, <laughs> an Elvish girl would have to be French. Uh, well, oh, yeah, well I, actually, that is a really good idea. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> right, that's sorted. I've got it now. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean? So um, I like to characterize the characters in the audiobooks as well. And I find that great fun uh the the children middle grade book i've written at the moment we have an alien in it called pangy now pangy was trying to communicate with the children on earth and couldn't quite find the right accent so he would go through old radio records here on earth and he ended up sounding like arnold schwarzenegger so this alien can't help it but he sounds and speaks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he's bringing that accent out into his book. Uh, so it's always, there's an underlying feeling of humor, which keeps the world going around that I like to introduce with everything. Even in the most serious moments, you can bring a little bit of humor into it. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's important. I, I think it, uh, it makes, I, I think you can be way too serious with something and make it completely dry or make it such an emotional, uh, yeah. you know, can kind of an emotional straight line. You know, I mean, you need that, yeah. that humor to, you know, you need to build up the tension and then take the humor and then drop it down a little bit and then build yeah. up the tension and then bring, you know, bring it back yeah. down again with, uh, you know, something funny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think some people think it's a little bit irreverent to do that, but I don't. I think you need to bring that into it and it's important. I think some people have a stick up their butt and they need to actually, uh, you know, look at, uh, um, yeah. there's a lot of great writers that do the, use those kind of mechanics and those kind of tools within their, their, uh, their writings. And it's not the 1800s or 1700s anymore. Guess what? It's 2021 yeah. and yeah. we can do whatever we want, you know, and if it sells yeah. exactly. too bad. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we were talking before about this little boy who lives down the road who's who's written, who's come up with this alien for me, and he kills people by doing these terrible farts. I mean, you know, little do they know I'm coming towards the last chapter of this book now. And, <laughs> you know, they, they are going to be faced by this armada of what we call stinkos, these horrible aliens. Uh -huh. And I'm going to use this little alien in it who's going to create this green gas 
which will completely obliterate them. I mean, I can't wait for it to happen. So um, I'm kind of curious. How do you develop that? I mean, do you have certain? I mean, certain uh, magnitudes of farts that that kill people. I mean, do you have a stun fart and a uh, you know a massive well, fart? That's a, in, that's well, a, is uh, it? Yeah, I mean, I should I should do that. I know I've just got this one alien who and uh, he's got five rows of teeth. I don't know what that's got to do in relation to his his butt, but <laughs> um, he's um, he can kill people with this green gas that comes out of his uh, uh, out of his bum. So um, we will have fun with that when I write that final chapter. Yeah. <laughs> five <laughs> rows of teeth. I guess that's so he can feed his bum. Oh no! Well, that's that's because he, he. What else he likes doing is eating small children and and cats. And cats. Yeah, he's he's obviously needs a little bit of counselling. This boy, but I'm going to use his ideas. I don't care. I'm still going to use them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that he needs counselling. He might just be the next no. great writer on on his way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, the new, the new Stephen King, probably. The new Stephen King, yep, yep. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> but what a thrill to go, you know, to go to school and say, hey, my alien that kills people with farts, yeah, he's in a book. Yeah, that's right. And not only is he in the book, but he's wiped out this huge armada of the aliens called Stinkos which are horrible. So, you know, there's a lot of success there. So it really uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, some of, some, of the, some of the superpowers that some of these children have got are just, are just unbelievably good. One's got a, a jet, a third eye that, that is a thermal eye, but can also shoot out laser beams. So it, I've got it. It's full here. I've got 18 little aliens with all sorts of things they can do. Uh, and one called Wabashuzel, okay. we've got a little one here called Wabashuzel that can create any sort of weather conditions. So um, I'm going to talk sweetly to her just so we can get a bit of sunshine. Please, please, here in the middle of England, I need a little bit of sunshine. <laughs> that would be a miracle, wouldn't it? Oh, it certainly would at the moment. Yeah, no, it's been pretty cold. We've had some snow. We've had this, had a lot of rain. When it doesn't rain, it's foggy. And when it's not foggy, it's snowing. So, yeah. 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 You know, that we're getting whiter and, whiter and whiter, whiter and whiter and whiter as the days go on until we start seeing a little bit of sunshine. Oh, boy. We, uh, well, normally, you see, I go, I, I go away. I go away for about a month to, uh, to Spain. Got a little okay. place there, and I go on a writer's retreat. <clears throat> in fact, I was over in Spain in March when I was there in the middle of the lockdown when they cut it down. And uh, I only I got on one of the last planes to get out of Spain. Uh, it was a bit hairy, um, yeah. but I definitely want to go back. I I'm planning on going back in August. I think by then, certainly in the UK, we will be beginning to start to see normality yeah because by then everybody will have been inoculated um so yeah i think uh i will get to see some hot sunny sunshine from the huh. south of spain so the uh how are the vaccines going over there good or yeah they're good you know i don't know how it works in the states but here you have to have two vaccines yeah, uh, you have one shot first, which covers maybe 70, 80 percent cover for you. And then you go back a number of weeks later and have the second one. And then you're supposed to be covered completely. Yep, that's so that's is that about right for you too? That's if it's the Pfizer one. Yeah. And then there's another one that's just one shot, I guess. I don't know. It really it really yeah. depends on which uh, I think there's three vaccines out there. I'm not I'm not quite sure, but uh well, hey, we, we've got one. Uh, yeah, we, we've got one. In fact, the big factory that's making them all is uh, is just down the road from me, and that's called AstraZeneca. So AstraZeneca uh, one, and that's a pretty good vaccine because it doesn't have to be kept at minus 70 degrees and all the rest of it. So uh, it can be kept in the fridge. So it's a lot more usable. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think, I think you know, things will get back to normal. But I've... I'm pretty sure we're social creatures, aren't we, Jeff? We, yes, we need we are. people. 
uh, we need to connect. And I think the worst thing with COVID, besides those the terrible times that people have died from it, is the fact that we're losing this contact with people. So whenever possible with my friends, I insist we do at least a FaceTime or we can see each other um, because uh, it's very important. There's going to be a lot of people suffering with depression in the UK, I yeah. think, when it's all done, I think. Yep, I, I think it's the same over over here. You know, there's going to be a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are segmented, segmented themselves off and you haven't seen them in a year, you know, or yeah. whatever. There's yeah. family members, yeah. you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen my parents in, uh, since March of last year, you know. I know it's, uh, <sighs> it, it's, and the thing is, it's affecting everybody. Yep. You know, and uh, I wrote a children's book. Uh, all my children's books have little themes in them and they're slightly interactive as well. But this one is called who are our neighbors and what happens is i've got i've got um two characters in it one's a red ant called mia and i've got arnie a chap called arnie in it arnie is a slug but he thinks he's a snail so he's always looking for a shell <laughs> but that's another story so they go one day arnie wants to tell Mia because she says who are our neighbors is it mr smith next door and she says no they go in a rocket and they go up to the moon and they turn around to look at the planet Earth. And Arnie says to Mia, what do you see? She says, well, I see our planet. Yeah. Oh, we're all neighbours. We all live on the same place. That's right. So, you know, this is all this thing with the children's books of trying, you know, children between the ages of like four and ten. Those are formative years. They learn a lot. Um, and so if you can hopefully put seeds in there that can be beneficial to help us all then then hopefully that might be a good idea so um so um that's what all my little children's books do well that works great until society gets a hold of them and uh and ruins ruins them but you know i know i know <laughs> yeah 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 the do-gooders the do-gooders, they're doing good. They're doing good. <laughs> Not. So we've talked where, about. Where are you, Je Sorry, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry, Jeff. No, go on. No, no I just want to ask. I don't, where are you? Where are you, please? In 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 the states? Where where do you? I am live? in a state called Wisconsin. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I kind of well, live over in here, border, Wisconsin I mean, and Illinois. Okay, I have relatives in uh, Minnesota. Sure. And I've been and I have been over to America lots of times and I love the Americans and I love the American way of life and your honesty and determination and integrity, which I know took a knock, but it's there underneath. Nobody can fool me. It's coming back up and I uh, and I'm looking forward to that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right <laughs> i'm uh i'm not a real big fan of our government right now so no i think uh okay i think we got some changes that need to be made but i don't know yeah we'll, well see. that'll always be the way with politics it's always you know yeah yeah i'll leave them to it put them on an island somewhere let them sort it out and let the ordinary people get on with being friendly and helpful and nice and all the rest of it to yeah, some extent. I'm, uh, I'm a little different than it. a lot of my uh, counterparts. I, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm a libertarian. So stay out of my face and don't tax me. Leave me alone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me live my life. You know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah. it makes, it makes for good conversation because, you know, no matter who it is, I can offend them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Don't, no, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i didn't like that one either <clears throat> but uh yeah i don't know yeah it's it's been an interesting four years and it uh it'll be an interesting uh, next four years too yep well you know things come in changes and i think sometimes it uh the 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 uh, feathers have to be ruffled for some good sometimes to come out of things uh, yeah have so you uh see. have you seen uh, uh pictures of washington dc they've got it surrounded and gated in and and yeah uh, they've yeah. got i 
think last time I heard 65,000 military, uh, you know, national guard and military in, in the, uh, in the small city of Washington, DC. It's like, this is cool. Well, you know, uh, we, we over here are very interested and very concerned, you know, honestly we are, uh, when we were seeing everything that was happening. So, um, we we do keep up with the news quite well so we yeah. know pretty well what's happening which is good really <clears throat> so their response to 30 people breaking into the capital and and walking around was sixty five thousand military that seems a little odd to me but we'll find yeah, out what's going right. on <laughs> well all, all it takes is somebody to put a little tweet out there saying well the revolution hasn't stopped it's about to carry on again yeah so there you go Here's a bunch of, I don't know, you know, um, when I look at, uh, at uh, our culture over here and, uh, you know, I, I think there's heretics on, on both sides. And I, I really think that at times we're just crazy. Yeah, I, I really do. And there's a lot of people that I, that I talk to that are friends of mine on one side or the other. And it's just like, you're all nuts. Mm. you're all absolutely crazy you know but they're yeah. they're they're committed to their causes that's for yeah. sure but uh yeah. um you know when it comes to politics in this country they are they're all crazy yeah yeah well you know it's not that much different over here we're the same we have the same uh, sort of uh, ups and downs and uh, ups and downs on problems so i keep out of it i don't tend to watch the news or anything it's much easier that way i can just get on and go into my little fantasy world <laughs> before the men come with the uh, straight jacket and takes me away yeah i can write some nice stories <laughs> i uh, i like following the conspiracy theories that's my favorite thing to do oh oh brilliant there should be there should be there's a compendium there isn't there waiting there is. to be written absolutely <laughs> some of the best storylines are conspiracy theories and if you can take off yeah. with those and you know it's just like the uh, i mean you know there's some there's some basis of truth there and then they take off and they explode with it and if you can write yeah. a book on a conspiracy theory you're going to attract a lot of yeah. people because they're like oh my yeah. god it's real you know even though you're yeah. writing fiction yeah. You know, it, yeah, that type of stuff that that gossipy type stuff attracts people. And I just, I like I said, I, <laughs> I, uh, I watch these things and it's like, oh, that's a good one. I'll write it down. It's like, okay, that's a that's a good short story. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, mm, yeah, but I don't know. That yeah. that's one of my favorite things to do is just watch, watch the nuts come out with yeah. you wouldn't believe what's happening. This is what's going on. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, feed me, feed well, me, I, baby. I, I, I think it was right at the very beginning when everything was kicking off and and don't forget we have crazies just as much you know it's not just you guys we've got them too but there was this lady who had in front of her a crate of corona lager okay okay uh, you've come across corona lager and she was crying her eyes out and she says this is what is doing it we've been drinking <laughs> this don't drink corona this is what, and I thought the punchline is going to come now. I'm waiting for it. It's going to come in, but it didn't come. The, coma. the whole thing was the punch. The whole thing was a punchline. Yeah. I can't believe it. So, uh, and we British have got a pretty dry sense of humor. That actually went viral around the UK. So then, um, off licenses, places you can you can go and buy your alcohol were doing these big plaques about we've got the coronavirus bottled lager here ready for you come and drink it now <laughs> oh yeah they went to town and all that then oh so yeah suddenly you know and i think they did the best sales ever then because <laughs> everybody so, wants uh, it i've actually funny. got a i've actually got a beer that uh that uh, is made uh just just like 40 miles north of me and it's uh called uh um you know yeah, we haven't really been cursing here, but it's called fuck COVID. That's that's the ale. You know, it's like, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I like to pick up a six pack of that and just have it in my fridge just for fun. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, listen, we have the wines too. You know, we've got one called, uh, we have a beer called Bishop's Finger. And we don't even want to think about where the bishops put his finger. Then exactly. we have one called Cat's, Cat's Pea, is a nice, it's a very unusual tasting white wine, I must say. <laughs> uh, so we have all uh, 
they have this sense of humor over here and they, they just try to name things. We even had crisps called hedgehog crisps. And they were saying, these are poor hedgehogs that have got run over. We flattened them out and they, we put them in the packet so you can have your own hedgehog crisps. Mm. Until the do-gooders came along, the cruelty people said, no, oh. that's not nice, that. Yeah, that's, that's going to offend it's, somebody. It, <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to offend the hedgehogs, so that's for sure. Uh, I, I think it's funny. So you have a wine called Bishop's Finger? Uh, that's a beer called Bishop's Finger. A, a and beer, a wine, okay. a wine's called Cat's Pee. Okay. <laughs> so and, and I, I could go on and they'd probably get ruder. But yeah, we have those. So people like it. And they just like to shout out, oh, by the way, you fancy a bit of Bishop's Finger? No, not tonight, darling. Thank you. It's yeah. this sort of banter. It's all part of the old... Uh, Do they have that no longer? Before. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. I like that accent. That was a great accent. <laughs> Shoot. That's funny. <laughs> We've got a uh, a ton of microbreweries around here that... Uh, <clears throat> that uh, um, you know, make specific, you know, ales and, and, uh, yeah. and different types of beers and stuff like that. And it's been, it's been fun for the last 20 years watching that come to, uh, you know, be a, a mainstay in the alcohol business. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it made, uh, drinking beer fashionable all of a sudden again mm. versus, mm. uh, you know, but that's been kind of fun over here in the U S so um we're kind of running up on an hour here so uh wow. do you have any uh, last words for your fans or anybody else that happens to be listening well no I, I, well let me just give a little bit of advice to any would-be authors out there okay and i'm sure they know this i made a huge mistake of putting all my eggs in one basket and by that i mean i would only sell my books on amazon mm -hmm. when it came up for the one chronicles i'd done everything you're supposed to do had a landing page on my website i had three months promoting it blah 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 and on the day of promotion for 17 days you couldn't find the books on amazon when you could find them after 17 days for another week they all said unavailable to purchase so oh. so much for working on the algorithm of amazon so my advice is put in with kobo with draft to digital to goodreads you name it get your books out as many places as you can uh but certainly for me as an ease of thing all my books are one chronicles is on uh, is on amazon uh, now luckily and they and they've now just sorted it out so you can actually put a series on there without having to be a rocket scientist to work it all out to get them to understand so um yeah all those books and they're all on my website i mean the, the idea i wanted to make my website which is www.thewand.me and on there you'll see all my books with all the descriptions and the links to our amazon where they want to buy it so you know so mm -hmm. everything's on the website at the one dot me okay and i'll make sure i put those uh that link and also a link to uh your author page on the uh, show notes that way they can just click on it and, and thank you very much uh, that'd be great that'd be a yeah. great help thank you yeah so you uh you think going wide's the uh way to go versus going exclusive with uh, amazon yeah because i mean if you think about it there will be customers with everywhere everywhere you know there were people who will much prefer going through draft to digital or going through kobo or going through goodreads so that's yet another place where you can have your books there available for people to to buy. Yeah. Uh, the other big thing, and I, I'm not sure if a lot of people can take this, but if you're thinking about becoming a millionaire by writing books, it's very, very difficult, if not impossible. I just need to tell you all this. <laughs> but so the idea is to think of all the little things on the outside, the periphery things like for me, I'm doing my vocal recording. That can help. I'm doing story time. I go to schools when they're open yeah. uh, and I read stories and I can sell books that way too to children's parents. So is look at it, not just for the book, but to move out as well. Although a big thing for me is, is my, I changed my philosophy drastically. I write books because I like to write them. 
if people like to read them, that's great. But they're not the out and out reason for me writing them. Right. And once you do that, then life seems to get a lot easier and more enjoyable. It certainly does for me. So mm -hmm. I write for myself, really. And I think that's an important tip because I think too many people get too caught up in, you know, your first release doesn't work out all that well, or this happens or yeah. that happens or whatever. Yeah. Just don't care. Go out there and write what you want to write, write what you want to read. Yeah. Throw it out there. And you know what? Somebody will find you at some point in time. Exactly. You know, I think that's, I think that's very sound advice, but I want to uh, close out with saying, Michael, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate every, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of wisdom in everything that you've said, you know, oh. um, believe it or not, even, even the, uh, you know, <laughs> I especially like the story about uh, growing up in Nigeria and how those kids were the happiest yeah. kids in the world that had nothing, yeah. you know, which I think Absolutely. is very true especially mm -hmm. when I look at kids over here in the U S um, but I do appreciate so much your time today and uh, thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. And with that, I'm going to say this, this show is a close and uh, this is Jeff with the DIY writer. Thanking you for listening. And if you wouldn't mind subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on wherever you happen to listen to podcasts. Uh, so you get all the updates and make sure that when these shows come out, you're notified right away. Other than that, Michael, thanks again. I appreciate it. I want everybody to have a great day and keep their chin up. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.